This control panel provides on one screen all of the controls necessary for complex protocols and up to 16 events can be used chosen along the top 1 through 16. Events when they're chosen can be set either for enabled or disabled. Events can also be set to be visible or hidden and we'll see when we use the training screen why some events would want to be visible and some would want to be hidden. For this wideband squash protocol with variable sounds all we need is one event, event number one, and the entire control is seen on this one screen. The way the event wizard works is as follows. We have an event condition and the event condition is presented as an if and we then can choose the condition that we want to look at and in this case you'll see it says if channel 1 user amplitude and the damping factor is 0 which means it will not be damped or slowed down at all this is the variable that's looked at we're going to be looking at the user amplitude when we use this we can actually pull down and make choices if we want we could have chosen channel 2 or we could choose use an entered value or we could even choose use an equation which we'll be explaining later for now we're gonna stay with channel 1 the next column over allows us to choose which component in this case we're looking at the user but the event wizard allows us to pick any of the built-in components delta theta alpha low beta beta high beta gamma or user so we're just going to stay with user. The third item allows us to pick the actual quantity. In this case, we're looking at amplitude. The choices we have include amplitude, frequency, percent energy, the current threshold value, the percent time over threshold, the variability, or the coherence. In this case, we're going to stay with the amplitude. So by making these choices, we're simply looking at the channel 1 user amplitude. Then there's a rule. In this case, the rule is, is less than, because we're doing down training. The rules include, is greater than, is less than, goes up and is above, or goes down and is below. So we're going to stay with, is less than. Now, the second set of values in the event wizard is called the condition, uh, the, the comparison area here. And uh, right now we're saying use entered value, and we're giving a value of 10.5. So quite simply now, we're seeing if the channel 1 user amplitude is less than, get the, an entered value, of 10.5. So if this is true, what will happen is described in the event result. And right here the event result says play a MIDI sound. Now the event results also could be to do nothing, and we'll see why that could be useful in the future. Play the MIDI sound, or right now we have inhibit event sounds, or to signal an artifact. So in this case we'll stay with MIDI sound. So whenever the user amplitude is below this entered value of 10.5, we'll get a MIDI sound. So this sends us over to the right-hand side of the screen where we're able now to program the properties of this MIDI sound. Now the MIDI sound has a variety of options, and when these are used properly, you can create a variety of different musical effects. The first thing we pick is the starting note. And in this case, we've picked key number 49 on a keyboard which is the note A and the frequency is 880 cycles per second. We see that with this menu we could pick any of the piano notes. We have all 88 keys of the piano available. We can pick any one we like. So for starting the event wizard is using a musical metaphor of the piano keys. Secondly we can choose the instrument and there are 128 different instrument voices to choose and we choose an appropriate instrument for the aesthetics and for the type of training we want to do and in this case we're picking an organ sound because it gives us a responsive and pleasant sound third we can pick a playing style 
which right now is sustained or percussive. Sustained means the note will sustain itself whenever the condition is true. Percussive means it will hit the note once when the condition becomes true and uh, then would continue hitting it in a striking fashion for instruments like a glockenspiel or a xylophone. For an organ, sustained is what we want. We then have choice of modulation. Modulation is the change in the music as the condition is met to a greater or less degree. Well, we can modulate the amplitude, which makes it louder or softer. We can modulate the pitch, which makes the note go up and down the keyboard. We can ask for a simple on-off, which simply says the note comes on and comes off. Or we can combine amplitude and pitch. In this case, we'll pick just amplitude, and the note will get louder and softer as the condition is met to a greater or less degree. We then can give the starting loudness. This is a scale from 1 to 128, and it tells how loud is the note when it starts out. Zero is inaudible, the low numbers are very faint, the higher numbers are stronger, and 80 is a good level to start out with because it's very audible, but it gives us room to increase. We then pick the loudness change rate. That tells us how much the loudness will change as the condition is met to a greater or less degree. Again, zero means there's no change, 20 would mean there's a very large change, and we're picking something in between, which is 10. What this basically means is for every unit of the quantity, the loudness changes by a factor of 10. And in this case, the unit is microvolts. So if the uh, level is exceeded by 10 microvolts, the loudness will go up by a factor of 10. Now note, in particular, since we've said is less than for down training, what happens is it gets louder as the signal gets lower. Next we have a note change rate. If we were doing pitch variability, we could tell how fast the note changes. And that tells how fast the music is going up on the keyboard. We're leaving this at 2 even though we're not doing pitch variability because 2 is a moderate amount of change. Now furthermore, if we were doing pitch change, we can pick the musical scale. And this is a very important aesthetic factor for the feedback. We have all of the musical scales known in Western music as well as Chinese and other types of musical scales, blues for example. And these provide an aesthetic content so that when the music goes up and down, uh, rather than just sounding like noise, it actually has musical quality to it. We can choose the musical key, which tells us as the music moves up and down, where the notes are chosen based on the proper key. And again, this makes sure that the music has a aesthetic quality to it. And we have the ability to choose a note or a chord. We'll leave it on a single note. So if we go to the lower left, to summarize, what we find is the event wizard goes ahead and tells us in the English language exactly what this protocol is. And what it quite simply says is, if channel one user amplitude is less than the value of 10.5, then play a MIDI sound. Mode two means sustained. The note is 49. The instrument is organ, which is instrument number 16. The style is sustained, the modulation is amplitude, the loudness is level 80, loudness change rate of 10, pitch change rate of 2, key of A, mode chromatic, and chord note. So the protocol is actually designed in English using pull-down menus and a descriptive uh, method.